Hey guys, before we start this episode, we just wanted to plug a couple of things that are coming up in our lives. Um, the first thing is the uh, sex ed at OSS. It is going to be on Friday, December 30th. 30th. Yes. Thank you. Gorgeous. Um, so it's going to be on Friday, December 30th. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's This time it's going to be a uh, fetish BDSM sort of intro course. I know there's going to be a fashion show. Um, well, I know we're going to have some uh, couple of rooms. I think there's going to be some potential for some basic shibari work. And then also we're going to get to see some live action flogging. Yeah. Um, so and- it's, it's very much an intro kind of thing and to wet um, your whistle yes and there'll be a lovely fashion show so it'll be great to come out and see some so excited for this this is gonna be so much fun um we may if we have somebody from the audience that wants to be a volunteer uh for one of either the shibari or the flogging Mm -hmm. uh, we may pick somebody from the audience that would be really nice Mm -hmm. that could be you um but definitely look at uh, our secret spots website um www.oursecretspot.com.au and uh, check their events page. You can pre-buy your tickets mm-hmm. for that. Again, it's December 30th, yep. the eve of New Year's Eve. It's going to be a rocking night. Um, it's going to be a big weekend. It's going to be a huge weekend. Yeah. Fireworks will explode, and they're not going to be the only thing that's popping in my pants. Please don't put fireworks in my pants. <laughs> no, let's not do that. <laughs> oh, I said that, and then I was like, I wish yeah, I hadn't said that. Yeah. But we have something else coming up, don't we? Uh-huh, and what is that? <laughs> that's the pendulum party. Mm-hmm. I'm so excited. So February 17th. February 17th, again, a Friday at mm-hmm. Our Secret Spot, because, you know, it's the only place in Sydney to be. Um, it's going to be a pendulum party where you're allowed to swing both ways. If you are uh, bi-curious, if you're heteroflexible, if you're heteroaccepting, if you're homoflexible, if you're homoaccepting, if you're homosexual, it doesn't fucking matter what you are. Uh, it's going to be a place for both men and women um, and everyone in between to kind of come together, find a place where you can be safe, you can explore your sexuality, there's going to be glory holes, there's going to be uh, big open playrooms, there are going to be little private playrooms, but it's going to be a place where you can go in, you can sort of test your limits, find you know you've, that thing that you've always wanted to try or always wanted to do. Um, if you've ever wanted to have a guy go down on you, well, I'll be there. Um, or if you've ever wanted to go down on a guy, I'll be there. If you're a lady and you ever wanted to go down on a woman, I'll be there. And if you've ever wanted to have a woman go down on you and see how it feels, I will be there as well. It's going to be great, and we'll see you. That's, again, February 17th. Yes. And uh, you'll be able to buy your tickets for that as well on uh, www.oursecretspot.com.au. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. So I look forward to that. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be fun. And you're yes. going to hear us talk about this a lot in the future, so suck it up and listen to it. I look forward to Glory Hole. <laughs> it's going to be great because there's going to be both boys so and girls in the Glory Hole. Yeah. It's going to be great. Ugh. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, thanks. And here's our episode. So I was in the shower, I was cleaning my ass and making all the shirts all sparkly. Thank you, Clean. I'm not the funny one, I'm the pretty one. Cock shots. <laughs> <laughs> I just checked myself out. Beatles, music, wine, and then loop up and get on top. The glory hole is like a, a like dick theater of a magic around. Which means your pants had better come off. Mama needs playtime. I didn't know. Uh, we're not sluts. We just love love. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Adam. And this is Mrs. Adam. And you found us here again on By the By. Yes, thanks for tuning in this week. It is the week before Christmas. Ho, ho, ho! So, Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! So excited. Happy Merry, Merry Hanukkah Kwanzaa. You forgot Festivus. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> Joyous Festivus. <laughs> Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Whatever. I don't care. Yeah. You know what? Whatever holiday you're celebrating, you celebrate it. You know why? Because you're all fucking work. That's all that matters. And, and just be happy and enjoy life. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's uh, basically all we... Down here in uh, Sydney, it's not snowing. Although I did hear, baby, it's cold outside in the uh, grocery again. Yeah. It doesn't have yesterday. the same ring, does it? It really doesn't because... And Frosty the Snowman? No. no. <laughs> let it snow. Let it snow. <laughs> White Christmas. And here I am walking around in flip-flops and shorts going, oh my God, I'm fucking dying here. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's great. 
Wow. Um, yeah, so we are dreaming of a sandy Christmas. Yes, we are. Um, because we are going to be going up north a bit, uh, where all the great white shark attacks happened, apparently. Um, but we are going to be having this great party. We're going to have a, it's going to be a pool party with a bunch of friends. Yeah. And it'll it's going to be awesome, awesome Christmas. Yeah, yeah. So once again, some beach time, as while, always. While our American listeners are huddled, <laughs> freezing next to their fires, we will be on a nude beach. Stretching out, butt-ass naked, getting some color to our cheeks. Exactly. We just lost a listener. (laughs) (laughs) It's worth it. Um, So excited. Uh, Yeah, so uh, that'll be fun. It will be. Um, We got some uh, interesting stuff to talk about tonight. We do. Some people may say, this topic stinks. Oh, terrible. Bad. Is, know, it, is this where the night started? That's basically okay. where this po- whole podcast is okay. going to go. I'm, I'm setting the precedent right now. The jokes Ooh. aren't getting any better. All right, buckle up, guys. It's going to be a long ride. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just wait. This whole podcast is going to be a pain in the ass. Oh, wow. What are we talking about? We're talking about anal. Anal, <laughs> anal massage, prostate massage. Uh, this is going back a couple weeks now to the last sex ed class at our secret spot yep. that Miss Jeff did. It was awesome. And uh, yeah, and so she basically went through and gave a guide to anal play, both for him and for her. Uh, she focused on prostate massage towards the end, mm-hmm. which is something that that we've had a lot of requests for. So it was it was good to touch on that. Yeah. Um, and practice with. And practice with absolutely. Uh, so I'm going to, I have her handout here that she gave out the night of, but I'll have to admit that I didn't pay as much attention to this class as the first couple because while she was talking and giving her her whole presentation, I was in the other room getting massaged by Mr. Adam. It's true. Because we were, again, the live demos for this one, and... And so he was kind of getting me warmed up. And, and that's part of what she talked about. We'll get to that. And so he was massaging me the whole time, and I was only kind of half paying attention to what she was saying. Um, so I caught some bits and pieces, but we can go through the handout, and we can talk about what I do recall hearing and what you heard, because you were probably paying a little more attention than I was. A little more, not but. a lot more. <laughs> but I know that Look, she... I had a beautiful naked woman in front of me on a, uh, on a massage table. And you want me to pay attention to somebody who had clothes on? <laughs> She's a gorgeous lady, though. She is, but she had clothes on. That's true. You were naked. That's true. She had a really sexy dress on, too. She really did. She is <laughs> She is gorgeous. I mean, yeah. let's, let's just... I'm going to throw it out there. I think she's beautiful. I have a little crush on her. Yeah. I have a big crush on her. Um, so, yeah. I can say that because I'm pretty sure she doesn't listen to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. Yeah, but so going back to the sorry, presentation. Sorry. I yes, was imagining yes. Miss Jeff again. <clears throat> um, so going back to the presentation, she started off talking about communication between partners and you know talking about anal play before you ever make it to the bedroom. And so talking between your two partners, making sure that it's something that you really want to do. You know, is there anything that you're not sure about, something that you're anxious about, you know, you're uncomfortable with, and just... You know, having that constant communication, like in in most things in a relationship, but having that constant communication in, you know, are you okay with this? What what do you like? What do you not like? You know, if you want me to stop at some point, obviously that's important to know as well. Um, And just being relaxed and knowing that you're on the same page as your partner. I think that's really the main the main goal of that first bit. Yeah, and you know, it's 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 interesting because so for Mrs. Adam and I, it's it's really different because this is not something that we really do. I mean, she, you know, for me, yes, but we had decided and discussed with Miss Jeff uh, and her art director before um, that what we would do is we would start with massage on the missus and then move to a prostate massage on me. Mm -hmm. Well, part of the, what we decided that how we wanted to script this, uh, was to do a preparatory massage on her and then insert a butt plug Mm -hmm. as sort of that culmination of her. And then once the butt plugs in, we switch. And the whole time I was, had already had a pre-inserted butt plug. Um, and she removes that butt plug and then goes straight into the, prostate stimulation. Mm -hmm. Well, the first half of that is something that you and I have 
I'm going to say never done. I don't think we ever have. No. no. I mean, we had done the other, you know, yeah. the prostate massage yeah. with me, but really even that, we hadn't done the massage build up or, or any of that. It was just not part of what we do. Right. Um, and that, I think some of that comes from my, I just, my lack of interest. And mm-hmm. like, don't get me wrong. There's times I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in anal sex, but that those times come and go. And it's usually while I'm at the grocery store. Um, that seems odd, but okay. <laughs> I, I mentioned the grocery store, not like that's where it happens, because I'm like, the first thing I think of when I get Which into Which aisle are you on? <laughs> first thing I think of when I get into the cereal aisle is, man, I'd like to touch her, Cheerio. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, told you, the jokes are not going to get any better. Um, they're always after me lucky charms. Um <laughs> But, you know, it's just something I don't regularly yeah. think about. Um, and then I'm I'm pretty experienced at bottoming, so mm-hmm. if just a finger is going in there, it's I'm I'm pretty much constantly yeah. ready uh, with a, a well-lubed-up finger. Um, <laughs> so it wasn't something that we really consistently worked on. Right. Um, and you have from time to time, you know, like we've kind of played a little a loosely, little, but nothing really serious. No. Um so actually, and it you know, and I haven't really played around with anal with a partner in many, many, many years. So leading up to this class, it was we had a couple of quote unquote practice sessions, and it was kind of fun. It was kind of it reminded me that hey, I do actually kind of enjoy this, and maybe we should explore it a little more here and there. It's not something we're going to go to routinely, but it, not like every night kind of thing. But at the same time, it it is fun to play with here and there. It is funny because so, I'm I'm interested in it. I'm, yeah. And now after the class, I'm even more interested in it. Yeah. I, my biggest issue, and I, I think my biggest um, turnoff for it is the fear of hurting you. Like, I'm so... Yes. But if you're, if you're hurting me, I'll tell you. I, mean, I know. Yeah. But it's even that, I don't even want you to have to tell me kind of thing. I don't right. want to hurt you and be like... Oh my God, I did this. Like, like whipping you and mm-hmm. spanking you and, and bondage. That's one thing because that's something I don't know. That's actually, that's interesting. Now yeah. I said that because it is, it's the same thing. It We're both is. going into this as equals and, and the, and you as the sub have the control, but even that, you know how often that happens. How often do I spank you? I mean, but it's also one of those things too, that, um, you know, we communicate quite well and we're always you know, aware of the other person and what they're kind of feeling while we're playing. And so I think if you were getting to the point that you were near hurting me even, you would know. Whether, I think so. Even if I didn't say right. so, I think you would pick up on it. And, and I, I think you're correct, but it's still... I don't think it's something you really need to be afraid of. I know. I just, it, it does, it's always in my mind. Yeah. Um, because, you know, spoiler alert, the, the, the key to good anal is slow. Yeah. It is a long, slow, patient play. And I think that while I am very good about focusing on a location for a very long time and just staying there, I'm not terribly patient when it comes to penetrative sex. Mm -hmm. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, once it starts, I'm like, all right, let's get this moving. Like, grr. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. So which I'm, is also something you know, which was interesting when we were playing around beforehand and, and practicing, was you know taking the time, and that goes into the next bit that she talked about was the preparation, and she was talking about you know taking the time to help your partner relax, setting the mood, you know, setting the scene. Um, you know, she talked a lot about cleanliness yep. and you know different ways to make sure that that you're clean. Um, and so also then that goes into the whole comfort thing as well because, you know, if whoever's receiving is clean, then they're going to be a lot more comfortable with it. Right. Um, and you know, making sure that you've got towels that you need, if you need an absorbent sheet of any kind, um, you know, candles and oils and if condoms, lube, of course, is hugely important. Um, and so she just kind of talked for quite a while about setting the scene, setting the mood, and Kind of, you know, getting it to where everyone is, both partners are comfortable. Comfortable and in the mindset. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's something for me, like, I actually like, and it's something that we don't do a lot of, is candles. I right. love candles. And um, it's funny We go in waves because sometimes we will, and then we kind of forget for a while. I know, we get lazy. <laughs> and we got to fix that. I know. Um, because that's something, because we had some candles set um, mm-hmm. during the massage, and I actually really like, yeah. like, Everybody looks beautiful under candlelight. 
I don't understand that. But it's one of those magics of, of candles. Is like, I think like Job of the Hut looks like Marilyn Monroe under candle, <laughs> candlelight. Uh, but I digress. Um, get yourself some candles, folks. <clears throat> But you know, so setting the scene with there, and maybe some soft music, and mm-hmm. and um, and and the soy candles are nice because you can then use them in massage as well. Exactly, um, which is always a, mm-hmm. a, a good thing. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, it was it was really nice to have that kind of that reminder that you should set the mood. She was sort of targeting for anal play, but I think for any play, yeah, um, it's important to set that mood and set those um, those mental expectations mm-hmm. of what. You know where are we going? And again, with with anal sex, there is that kind of that knowledge of where you're going. And I think that most people realize that that's a long path that you're going there. It's not going to be most people aren't a warm me up for 45 seconds and then fuck me in the ass. Yeah, and especially for me, I don't relax very well, and so I need a long time to kind of wind down and get into that mindset you know, where I'm, I'm not tense and I'm not, you know, just conscious and aware of everything that's going on, which is why during the talk, you you know, Mr. Adam, you were massaging me. For a good 30 minutes. Yeah. And Ian, that could even go longer. I I would say a normal play that would have gone longer if we were doing this. Um, but it still kind of helps. And and that's why I kind of, you know, stop listening a bit to what's going on. I kind of get in my own little world and I can relax and, and that really helps. Um, and she talked, that was the next bit that she talked about was massaging. And she went through a whole suite of techniques to use, um, both, you know, talking about not just massaging the whole body, but particularly, you know, the buttocks, the, the perineum, and the anal area. So she, you know, and, and it's, a lot of it is not, is just massaging around the area, you know, bringing the blood flow, the sensation to that area, not necessarily... You don't necessarily have to massage the anus for this. Yes, no. You know, just, oh, you're just I'm, trying to warm up and get get comfortable with playing in that. For that me, I, I was massaging. I was trying to focus on everything. Mm-hmm. Um, this, this isn't a full body massage. No. Um, this is a from about the lumbar um, mm-hmm. down to focusing on the upper thigh. Mm-hmm. That's where I focused on. But at the same time... You know your hands drift. You're so and you had some long strokes up to my yeah, shoulders. Long and, strokes yeah. up to your shoulders, and then long strokes down to yeah. your ankles. You know I wasn't focusing on feet. I wasn't focusing on, sh- on really on your shoulders. Um, but what I'm trying to do is get you relaxed. And I say one of the things I focus on is is your breathing. Mm-hmm. So and it's very clear when I'm doing something right and when you're relaxing is you start those long, slow, deep breaths mm-hmm. and you can feel everything sort of winding down. And of course I can feel the tension leaving from your muscles, but it's easier for me. It's harder for me to feel the muscle tension difference, mm-hmm. but easier for me to feel the the breathing. So there was a couple of times where I'm massaging you. So I was standing, I guess, if your head is up, I was standing on your left mm-hmm. um, with my right hand on your ass and my left hand, there was a couple of times my left hand just sat on your back yeah. so I could really feel your breathing because, you know, the club was quiet, but she was talking and things were going on and I wanted to make sure I could tell when you were inhaling and exhaling so I could see your relaxation. Um, mm-hmm. And one of the points that I really focused on that I'm still, I'm going to say this wrong because I'm not sure exactly what they were saying, is the cis? Six bones. Cis I'm not sure. Basically, it was it's, it's, it's like the, the bottom the of the pelvis. Yeah, yeah, the bottom of the pelvis. Yeah. Um, and I probably should have looked this up before, but you know, it's it's one of those things that you know you can feel those bones right under each ass cheek. Yeah. Um, and massaging that area there, and I found that like when I was massaging that, your hole from your hole. <laughs> there's a joke there. <laughs> Boom. Thank you. Um, your your hole you know, ass region from, again, from that, uh, lumbar section, lower back to the upper thigh, I could feel that relax. Yeah. Um, yeah, that felt really good. And there was a few times where I would, I know that I would have, I would be massaging you with my fingers and have my thumb on your anus, mm-hmm. uh, and feel that kind of, you can feel that relaxation around mm-hmm. your thumb. And that was kind of an interesting feeling because having not really done that a lot with you mm-hmm. to feel that, I was like, Oh, all right, this is, yeah. All right. This makes this makes logical sense. 
And, and side note, because you just mentioned finger on my anus, uh, one of the other things that she brought up, very, very good point, is any hand oh, that's yes, used in the anal area is not to go to the vaginal area. Yes. Two completely separate hands. Wear gloves if you need to. Change. It's fine. But do if, if you go from the back, do not go to the front. Yeah, that's extremely important. That's yeah. a chemistry experiment that's waiting to explode. Yeah. Your partner will not appreciate that. No. Um, <laughs> and then neither will you because your partner will have some sort of internal infection and then you won't get laid for a while. So um, that's bad mojo. Yes. Um, on top of that as well, any you need to be extremely cautious that any lube that you put on the anus doesn't drip down into the vaginal right. area. Um, Which is why having a towel underneath is yeah. important. And we did have a towel We did. So underneath. we had uh, a yeah. pillow that you were hugging. So you're mm-hmm. on your belly. You're, we had a pillow that you were sort of um, hugging to your chest. So mm-hmm. you're laying on a pillow almost diagonally. Uh, yeah. And then you had your one leg up, mm-hmm. um, I guess. The, almost in a figure four type pattern. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, and this would the, would be the leg that is if you're hugging the if the pillow is at a diagonal of, uh, from your left shoulder to your it's the shoulder bottom that right is hip, up more. Yeah, yeah, your leg is your left leg would be up. Mm-hmm. Um, this gives for me. I like this. I like this when I'm bottoming for people as well, mm-hmm. uh, because for me this is a very comfortable position. It, I feel like I'm in a little more control. Um, you're kind of opening up your legs out a little more so that your anus is a, a little, little easier, easier to reach. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I like that's a that's actually a pretty fun anal sex position as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you know, we we're doing the massage thing. Do we want to go through the different types of massage now? Or? Yeah, we can go through some of the techniques. Um, I know she had a whole bunch. She had a whole we bunch probably of them. won't get to all of them, yeah. but we can name a few. She had a whole bunch a of few them. Key ones. I'm going to do the ones. I'll, I'll just talk about the ones that I like okay. to do. Sure. Um, the the first one for me and Miss Jeff is gonna she's gonna be screaming at me because I don't know what she called them but I know what I call them so <laughs> <laughs> uh, what I like to do is I like to take the heel of my hands um, and I like to sort of start grinding down from the uh, from the lower the upper lumbar and so you're you're running down the lower back over the over the ass cheeks and again the whole time I'm sort of doing a uh, wax on, wax off. Mm, Anybody mm. who's watched uh, Karate Kid will know <laughs> what this is. I'm waxing on down the ass and waxing off down the axe. Uh, down the ass, not down the axe. We're not cleaning an axe here. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> I mean, but, some would say the gash is like an axe wound. But... Oh, wow. <laughs> you got all Australian on me. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody gash. All right. Um, we may have lost some people. <laughs> No, I can tell you who there. We have a listener up in Brisbane who is screaming at us right now through the uh, yeah yeah through the iPod. <laughs> um, so you know, I'm doing this wax on, wax off from the lower back down to the upper thighs. Uh, I like doing that. I think that's really good. I'm not using my fingers really at all. It's all the heel of my hands. Uh, once I get down to the upper ass, that's when I would grab your legs and I like to stretch. Mm-hmm. And I'm using my fingers then as tightly as I can get uh, down the thighs. I, I make sure to rub my heel of my hand through the leg pit. I don't know the area behind your knees, yeah. uh, and then over your calves. For me, that's one of those things that I enjoy it, so I do it to you. And we had used um, leading up to this, we had used one of the soy candles, so mm. it had a little bit of that that massage oil yes. to it. And then there was also lube there as well that we were using. So, but I think it was mostly just the candles and the oils from that. It was mostly the candles yeah. from that. Or, I'm sorry, the soy soy candles. So for massaging, I prefer a warm soy candle wax. Yeah. Any massage oil will work. But what's nice about the soy candles is they're already warm. You don't have to yeah. let your you don't have to let friction heat them up. Um, and there's also when it when it hits your skin, there's that quick kind of the heat when it first hits. Yeah, so you always really hear kind of your, awesome. your partner gasp, yeah. and it's like, <gasps> yeah. <gasps> so we, we like to use the candles as opposed to massage oil. We have oil, but we prefer to use the yeah. yeah. Um, side note: if you if where you live gets really really warm, yeah. and you have stick candles and not the little cup candles um, that are in the glass containers, if you have the stick candles, put them in the fridge. Uh, soy candles tend to melt at room temperature when it gets warm outside. Um, so it's Christmas, so all of our listeners in the States are probably fine with their soy candles, just where they are. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, so 
I call that my sort of my flat palms. I, I think of that as my flat palms technique. Mm-hmm. Um, once I hit your ankles, I like to, again, grab with my fingers and drag all the way back up. But this time I try to make a point to one hand, of course, is ahead of the other hand, but both thumbs will go through the ass crack. Mm -hmm. Um, There's no real anal touching, but it's just a, hey, this is where I am. You're warming up the area. Yeah. Yeah. Let you know that this is where things are going to proceed. I'm also a big fan of the I'm going to call it the alternate thumbs technique where mm-hmm. you're rolling one thumb over the other. Mm-hmm. So it's sort of like twiddling your thumbs on somebody's body. So you're, you're kind of twiddling your thumbs all the way down one side and then all the way back up the other and then all the way down one side. And each time I go down, I'm getting closer to that, to the mm-hmm. ass crack and then back up closer and then back down closer. And again, like she said, we're trying to move that blood yeah. into that area to, you know, help you relax. And, and as a side note, when things progress with you, I mm-hmm. like to do that on your perineum oh, because I think yeah. that feels that feels really good for me. I need to remember so, that then, like because it feels good to me when I do it on you. You know, it's funny but, we never actually talked yeah. about that, but I've never really focused on your perineum because yeah. I assumed that since you don't have a prostate, you don't really feel anything through there. Yeah. Is that not the case? I don't know. We've never really played with it much. But you said you just said it feels good. No, no. It feels good for me to do it to you. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you meant it yeah. felt good for you. Because no. I was like, holy shit, we've never discussed it because I avoid your parent. I'm like, she didn't have a prostate. Why does she, <laughs> why does she care? No, no, no that's something that I like to do on you. When, oh, when yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, it feels fucking awesome. Yeah. Um, side note, you're massaging the prostate from the outside when you do that. So right. give that a go. Um Sorry, and then, I was jumping ahead a little there, but yeah, continue no, but, on to yeah. what you like to do to me. <laughs> um, and then for me, the last big one that I like to do is, and she had a great name for this one called Spider Fingers. Yeah. Um, I say it's a great name. It's a fucking terrifying name. we got to come up with something <laughs> better than that. But every time she said Spider Fingers, I was like, oh, spiders are gross, but Spider-Man is hot. So let me imagine Spider-Man massaging me. So I like to think of it as Spider-Man Fingers. <laughs> Less scary. Right. Because um, I don't want to think of like some giant huntsman on my ass. <laughs> okay, sorry. <clears throat> I am, it's out of my system now. As soon as I say that, she looks over my shoulder in like this no, terrifying I'm way. To, I'm like looking no. over at the wall going, is there one on the wall? Oh my God, is there one on the wall? <laughs> no, I'm trying to picture a huntsman massaging an ass and they're not going to have the strength to do anything but tickle you. <laughs> so if you feel a little tickled down there. Not funny. God, really? <laughs> God damn it. Anyway. You're dead to me. Um, yeah, you keep up this kind of talk. You're not getting a massage tonight. Okay, I'll hush. That's I'll right. be quiet. I want my massage. <laughs> so, um, spider fingers. Let's talk about Spider-Man fingers. So what I'm doing there is uh, it's basically drumming my fingers uh, as much as I would drum it on a table, but drumming it up the ass. So starting at the uh, the bottom uh, or the upper thighs, and I start pinky to, to index, and I pinky to index, pinky to index, all the way up, going over the anus. And this time, as I do it, I'm pulling her ass cheeks apart. Mm-hmm. Um, or my, I should say my partner's ass cheeks apart because I've done it on other people other than you. Um, but that's that's what I'm doing. I'm pulling the ass cheeks apart, and then you get up to the top, to the lower back, and then I follow up to the spine, you know, halfway up the back, doing these spider fingers. Um, and then back down, and then back up, and then back down. Um, at the same time, occasionally on the way back down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze the cheeks together uh, as tightly as I can, and then you let go. And you squeeze the cheeks together as tightly as you can, and then you pull mm-hmm. them apart. And so it's this constant change of of both technique and rhythm pressure. and pressure and mm-hmm. feeling that really, for me, that's what relaxes me. It's that constant... The only constant is change. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll do the same move maybe three to five times, and then I'll think, oh, I need to change to the next one. And then mm-hmm. three to five times, and you change to the next one. And I find that with with you especially, and I'm with other partners as well, and I know for me feeling it, that's what relaxes me. Mm-hmm. It's that that's what sort of gets me in that mood of, okay, um, and then I'll repeat those different moves and then slowly start doing a little more anal play. Mm-hmm. Um, she had a great, dis- her description as well, the doorbell. So yes. you take the flat of your thumb, usually near the first joint of your thumb, and you push that against the anus. And mm-hmm. you push and count to one, two, 
three, and then let go. And then you move on to do something else. And then you'll come back and go push, one, two, three, and then let go. And again, for me, by the time, it's not the push that's what's great. It's the letting go. It's the release. Yeah, it's yeah. such a weird, wonderful feeling. And I know she even spoke about that with the clitoral and G-spot massage. Yeah. You know, it's not the push that gets you. It's the release that mm-hmm. gets you. Um, and I know for me, the perineum is that way. You know, you can push, and then that's that release. And it's like, woof. Yeah. Woof. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually woof, but I just woofed. Um, so... We did this for a while, mm-hmm. and then I feel like those are the those are the main things. I, those four or five techniques yeah. are the things that I tend to do with other partners, mm-hmm. with male partners as well, and that tends to work for me. Yeah, and the main thing is as well, don't rush it. You know, take oh, your yeah. time. If you're gonna do this with a partner, especially if it's your first time or early, you know, it's not something you do routinely. Plan on several hours an evening, something, you know, don't rush it, take your time and, you know, just have that communication with your partner and pay attention to like Mr. Adam said, how they're breathing and and how their, their body language. And you can tell how relaxed they are and how into it they are. Um, cause I know as I get into it more and more, as you relax me and I get more and more ready for it, you know, I'll kind of just not realizing it, but I'd caught myself a couple times, you know, my ass would just kind of raise yeah, up a little bit. You're pushing bit, you know, yourself just, into yeah. me. And so yeah. for me, looking at you do that, as soon as you do that, I back off. Yeah. Because, you know, what you want or what I want as the massager is I want you to almost be begging me yeah. to do it. Yeah. Um, that's where both, again, there's a bit of that power play there. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny because I know penetrative sex, anybody who's penetrating is typically in a power position. But for me, anal sex is a lot different. Anal sex, whoever is penetrating, is in the more powerful position. Um, So I want you to be, like, again, begging for it. So I'm going to pause for just a second and take a step back. And we talked a bit about preparation before. Mm -hmm. Um, I am fastidious about... (laughs) anal cleanliness before somebody plays with me. I will admit, I don't fucking care about the partner. Um, If I'm going to do oral on the ass, then yes, I I need to have watched you shower. Right. Um, But if, you know, if not, I'm not as concerned, which makes me think we should talk about... Well, the other thing is if you're going to do oral on someone's ass, if you're going to, you know, rim them or anything, you can also use a dental dam. Absolutely. So if you're not sure, you know, how clean they are, or if you're just one of those people like me who's just kind of a germ freak, then you can always use a dental dam as well. Absolutely. So that's Um, an option. But, you know, things that you'll come across um, if you are an avid anal player... um, is you'll come across, and, and this is for people who are a bit squeamish, you might want to tune out for a second or two, undigested food. And by that, I mean corn kernels, corn. beans, lentils, seeds. foods, seeds, things that our bodies just aren't intended to fully digest. No matter how well you chew, you'll still see pieces. I have seen this. Um, it's I, a fact of life. It's a fact of life. I mean, yeah. It is what it is. So if that kind of stuff makes you kind of squeaky, um, don't don't partake in, in anal play. Um, you know, let's be realistic. And this is hard for me to say. Farts happen. You know, anytime you're putting a finger in there or your junk in there or a toy in there, you're pushing air in there. And that mm-hmm. is not a place where air is supposed to be. So, um, interestingly, if you hold your farts in, they got to come out somewhere. That air has got to escape somewhere. And oftentimes it'll come out through your lungs. This little side note that I learned in biology back when I was a kid. I don't know if that's really true, but (laughs) I like to believe it. It'll come out eventually. It will come out. Not that way. I mean, it'll come out eventually. That air has got to come out. I know. (laughs) Information that you find out from this podcast may not actually be true. Mr. Adams' beliefs and opinions are his own. Um, (laughs) All science is as real as... It's not real. It's not real. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you. Anyway, but uh, but the point is, it, it's not a place where air 
lives. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's going to happen. So if that makes you or your partner uncomfortable, maybe it's not for you. Yeah. Um, but for me, I like before I do any kind of anal play, I use uh, I, I shower very well. I make sure I've gone to bath. I, I've gone to the bathroom uh, at least at most, I should say, uh, four hours ahead of time. Um, and then I've also used a, uh, a, a, an anal douche, but it's a, it's a bulb. Like a bulb. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Listen to one of our earlier podcasts and you can hear about how I, uh, about shat myself in the shower. Um, <laughs> and also if you are planning this and you know well enough in advance, I mean, we also will watch what we eat. Absolutely. So that, you know, you can try to have you know, less of those undigested foods, maybe like yeah. clear foods, even white foods a little better. Yeah. But, yeah, absolutely. The, the long and short of it is it, it, it's, if it makes you, I don't know. For me, it's not a big deal. It isn't now. I will say the, the, the Bradford from 10 years ago, Absolutely. I was really uncomfortable with all of the, the backdoor stuff, mm-hmm. both as a receiver, as a giver, everything. Me now, I'm like, eh, it's not that big a deal. Yeah. Um, because I'm sort of, I like to think I've grown up about it, but maybe it's just the more you do it, the, you're like, meh, it, just, it is what it is. It also could be because I'm a lot more comfortable with it. Absolutely. That, that you're not as squeamish. If your partner was a little more squeamish about it, you might be still too. And that's a good point. That's actually fair enough. Yeah. Um, you're not squeamish at all. No. Uh, I will say, you know, there's there's been there's many times where you, you use a toy, you put it up there, you come out, it's got a little bit of something on it. Yeah. Um, it's not a lot. It shouldn't be a lot because you, those those five or six inches, up to eight inches, I guess even, um, that's not where you store your 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 poo. Um, it's stored somewhere else. Um, so you're not, yeah. Yeah, that might be a little something, but you just. Toy cleaner. Yeah, exactly. If, if it's, or a condom. If, you, if you're if yeah. you worried about, you, you know... We actually do use a condom on anal toys a lot. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because it's awesome. just so much easier. But I meant like on, on your junk itself. Oh, you yeah, know, yeah. Use a condom. Too. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And that's also where gloves come in handy with fingers. Absolutely. Because, again, you don't want to put the yeah. one finger in the back door and put that same finger in yeah. the front door. Especially if it's a new partner. It can be good to wear gloves as well. Yeah. yeah, and by gloves we mean like latex, nitrile, nitrile. something like that. Yeah, nitrile gloves. Not like mittens. No. <laughs> and Baby, you're hot. Why are you wearing those <laughs> mittens? Because you're so hot. <laughs> um, so I digressed. What were we talking about? Um, so we were talking about massaging you. Um, uh-huh. I wanted to take a break to talk about like cleanliness. Yep. Um, you were, of course, immaculate because you're well beside the back. Because I'm perfect. Beside the fact you're freaking perfect, <laughs> um, but you had you had showered, you had yeah. cleaned, so you were you know. In fact, you came from work, went straight to the club at, uh, at OSS, and, mm-hmm. and showered there. Mm-hmm. So we built up, massaged, and then at that point, I think that's when everybody was. You, I could tell you were ready for the butt plug because yeah. again, you were kind of pushing your ass against my thumb uh-huh. every time I got near there. Your bottom would li- lift up, um, and I knew that you were. I was like, awesome. So at that point, Miss Jeff had kind of glanced, kept glancing over at us. Which, again, tangent. Can you imagine teaching a class and to a bunch of clothed people, and you're talking <laughs> about this stuff, and every time you look to your left, you see a table with you stretched out on it naked, and me clearly with a thumb in your ass. Um, <laughs> like, that... That's got to be a little surreal. I got to give that girl yeah. credit, because she focused on exactly what... She yeah. never missed a beat. Nope. Um, I can't wait to talk to her about that, because we talked about other things after the... Mm-hmm. But we didn't talk about that. Um, that was funny. Yeah. Uh, so, so she brings the class in there and there was what, 23, three people, 23, I think 23 plus yeah. Miss Jeff, 24 plus the three people who work at the club. Yeah. Another 27 people see us naked. Yeah. Uh, and so we started, uh, massaging you as much again, starting as if we were starting from fresh, mm-hmm. but she had made it very clear yeah. that we'd been massaging for, she said an hour is more like 30 minutes. Um, but it should be at least, least 35, mm, yeah, least, 30, 35 minutes yeah. up to an hour. Yeah. And then we culminated in inserting the butt plug. Yep. 
And so, and for me, this happened to be a metal butt plug. And one thing that, you know, you talk about with your partner is which way they like it, because Miss Jeff said, you know, you can warm it up if you'd like, whether, you know, you blow on it, whether you put it between your hands. Hold you can, it in your mouth. No, I'm kidding. I'm no, joking. I'm joking. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but, you know, you can warm you could, it up. You could, I guess, if it was, came from the dishwasher. True. It's, it's, but you can warm it up before inserting it into your partner. But for me, I like the metal plug cold. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know why that is, but it, when it's warm, it, I don't like it. I like it cold. Well, you kind of like ice play, which I still don't Lightly. understand. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, like um, You keep them ice cubes in my drink. <laughs> um, but she did talk in the class about, uh, which, which we didn't do just more for time factor for the live demo, but she did talk about anal play on a woman. Right. Um, so she did talk about, you know, massaging the, the perineal sponge. Um, and, and as well, you know, while you're doing anal play, you can also be massaging the G spot and the clitoris and things like that. Again, separate hands. So she did talk a lot about that during the class as well. It just, we couldn't, we didn't have time to demonstrate everything. 12, 15 minutes to show anal play on both Mrs. Adam and myself. Right. Um, so, so, so we did what we could, and, and, and it was you know, the, demonstrating some of the massage techniques. Uh, you demonstrated those on me, and then inserting the butt plug. Yep. And then we switched places. And then we switched places. Yes. And uh, I hopped up. Mm-hmm. <sighs> so, side note here. Uh-oh. Constant listeners will know that I have a bit, as she's our hand is already on her forehead. Uh, constant listeners will know that I have a bit of a confidence issue when it comes okay. to my man. I wasn't sure where this was going, so. <laughs> I know, right? It could go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> this week. Um, I have a bit of a confidence issue when it comes to the size of my junk. Um, and I know I commented to you the next day. And, you know, like, I'm wearing a butt plug, sure, but... You know, you well, take. You had your, on some very nice, sexy. You had on your red jock straps, yeah. I did. Yeah, I did have they, on my red jock strap. They hug your ass. Absolutely, nicely. yeah. I mean, yeah. I know I looked hot, but yeah. still, you take everything off, and then your junk's hanging out in front of twenty-seven people. That's true. Um, and you look down at yourself, and you're going, "All right, cool. Look, I'm not erect. That's totally okay." Because for me, it's hard for me to get erect with a butt plug in. Right. It's very difficult. It can happen, but you gonna you're gonna have to work on it. Um, and then. So that's okay. But, you know, I'm not the biggest guy out there. I'm a, I'm a grower, not a shower. You know, so that's kind of a uh, wah-wah, you know. And then I've got the butt plug in, so I'm not erect. And then, but then you get the whole nervous kind of energy where I'm in front of a large group of people um, with, a th- um, you know, putting a butt plug into my gorgeous wife. And then she's going to take one out of me. So then I get all that nervousness and I look out <laughs> and what am I doing? I'm fucking turtling. Like, seriously, dude? Like, uh, really? You know, come on. You know, be brave. <laughs> like, Aww. just come on out. I was... I, I was he, he was going back into his shell. He really was. <laughs> um, but I, nerves do that to me. Yeah, like, yeah. nerves... Like, I turtle like a son of a bitch. And I look down at myself, and I'm like, well, there's not there's much I can no, do. No, at that point, there's not much there's you can do. There's nothing I can do. Nope. So I uh, look down at myself, take the jock strap off, give myself two or three solid tugs. <laughs> Tried to and rip myself out. I don't know. And then I hop up on the table. <laughs> Please continue. Yes. That was my that was my last tangent for okay. this three um, minutes. Right. I was going to say, not the last one for the podcast, I'm, I'm sure. I'm looking at the time. I've got three minutes. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah. So, once Mr. Adam was up on the table, I, I massaged your perineum a little bit mm-hmm. to start with. Yep. But then I pulled the butt plug out. Because I'd been wearing that butt plug for an hour and... And change. And some change. Yeah, Yeah, which is a great feeling. Yeah. So you had it in for a while. So I pulled it out. And as Mischief was talking about some of the massage techniques, again, on the perineum and the area, um, you know, you had already been warmed up and so didn't need a whole lot in that respect. Um, But I I, I did massage the perineum a little bit. And because she was talking about putting pressure on the prostate from the outside as well as the inside. And so we kind of went through that a little bit. And then I inserted my, I had on the glove. Yeah, you were Michael Jacksoning. Yes, yes, I was. Meaning you had one glove on, one glove off. One glove glove on. It was not sparkly, but maybe next time. Maybe. But yeah, so I had one glove on and one off. And so I, at that point, then I inserted a finger and I, trying to think. I think it was just one. Yeah, um, at that point it was just one. I think you moved up to two. 
Yeah, I probably did. Um, but yeah, so I inserted a finger at that point and started massaging the prostate from the inside. And I'm acting this out as we were talking, by the way, guys. It is, she is. She's, she's knocking shit over. It's yeah, cause, awesome. Because I, I, I talk with my hands. I can't help it. It's, so I'm sitting here, you know. You must be of Italian descent because every Italian I've ever met talks with their hands. It's great. I love it. <laughs> yeah, so I was massaging the, the prostate from the inside as well as still a bit from the outside. Yeah. And it was kind of funny because you're, you're doing this. Miss Jeff is talking. This, this is my first time actually being. Being not I'm you say, a volunteer. Yeah. yeah, this is my first time not do, actually doing. I'm not actively doing something. I'm yeah. just fucking laying there, and it was kind of weird to have mischief at my left shoulder uh-huh. talking about what you're doing. And but still, again, much like with the clitoral massage, everybody else disappeared, and it was just. Yeah. I felt like for a moment there was a, was just a number of moments. It was just you and yeah. I, and we were at home, and yeah. you know we're in a place where we're comfortable. It's we're safe, right. and. And I know at some point too, um, because I like to when I when I am playing with your prostate, I like to go down on you as well. And so I know that that I, I went down on you f- for a little bit. Yeah, you could have done um, that more. That would have been awesome. Yes, we had we had to, only had a certain amount of time to to play with it. <laughs> suck here. fast, suck hard. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I went down on you a little bit there, um, and and played with you your penis a bit as well. Uh, but then, and you were really close. I could tell you were close to orgasm. Yes. But don't think you ever quite reached no. it at that point. No, it was a bit of nerves in the fall. Yeah. So, and I should, again, I, I said I would wait for a tangent. And if I look at the clock, I need 20 more seconds for a three-minute tangent. Just do it. It's okay. Okay, Just thanks. do it. <laughs> You're too, you people are too kind. Anyway. Uh, so I'm not erect at all no. at this point. No. But I was so close to a prostate orgasm. Yes. So for me, I don't have to have an erection to have a prostate orgasm. I don't have to come to have a prostate orgasm or, or, or orgasm. Anyway, <laughs> um, but it's, it is something that can happen for, at least for me. And I, I know everybody out there is different, mm-hmm. um, that with the right kind of mis- massage on the prostate, I can have an orgasm and yeah. just be completely flopping out around there. Yeah. Um, it's an amazing feeling. And I was so, you were really so close. close. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I, I, it, I could tell you that you weren't quite going to get there. So at that point, I just kind of backed off and we kind of, you know, ended things at that point and, and mischief wrapped it up. And yeah, yeah. that was it. And that was the class. It was kind of amazing. I mean, the experience was, was, of course, it's positive. You know, after the class, I don't think we had as many people come up and talk. I didn't have as many people come up and talk to me as we did um, after the G-spot uh-huh. and clitoral massage class but I think we I think a few people were sort of not afraid of us kind of taken aback like holy shit we just saw that yeah that's the sort of the feeling that I got um we did have a number a a few people say wow that was a nice show right um but it is a topic that you know we had it's a bit taboo it is a bit taboo and we had heard people saying that they were interested in this and they wanted to learn a bit more about it. And and so, you know, there was good response from it in that respect. Yeah. Uh, and it'll probably happen again at some point. I don't really know how I'm sure things are going to go. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. So, you know, we do a, we do a questionnaire at the end of the, mm-hmm. at the, end of, the of the class. And um, of the questionnaires, at least two of the people, one of the things that they were interested in future classes was anal and prostate massage. Yeah. So, I mean... Even having been there, they're yeah. sort of interested in sort of a, taking it a step forward and seeing a little more. Yeah. Um, and I think, yeah. I, and I said, I think, I am certain that at some point we will do a uh, strap on and pegging role reversal oh, uh, sure. class. Yeah. And I'm actually looking for, I'm yeah. really looking forward to being the volunteer for that uh, because I think it's important to see. You know, that a guy can be comfortable being sub- completely submissive sure, yeah. to a woman. It's fucking hot as hell. Yeah. Oof, woof. Again. Um, so before we move on to the rest of, of the night from there, let's do a quick wrap up on yeah. like prostate massage. Okay. Like what are your, if you could give like three to five takeaways of what people should, if that's, if this is something that they want to experience uh-huh. from a, for a, from a female point of view as, as a female receiver, um, what do you think you would say to them? You like, said prostate massage. You mean anal massage? I'm sorry. I meant, yeah, I meant anal massage. I said prostate. Yes. Sorry. From a, anal massage, from a, from a woman's point of view uh-huh. as a receiver, 
three to five like takeaways. Like this is the advice I would give to another woman or man. Yeah. So if you're interested in it, um, I would say, again, just make sure that you and your partner are on the same page as to what you want and how much penetration you want. Because maybe starting off, you just want to play with the anal area and maybe touch on, but you don't want to. You don't want insertion. Um, if you do, again, you know how much. So just make sure you're on the same page with that. Um, make sure you don't go from anus to vagina with the same hand or change gloves in between um lots of lube use lots of lube for sure that area is not naturally lubricated i will say when you think you have enough lube (laughs) add add a little more lube yeah (laughs) that's that's a really good point Yeah. yeah lots and lots of lube um and and just go slow make sure that that your partner's relaxed make sure that they're in the mood that they're in the right mindset that they're in the zone Take your time. You know, again, this can go on. It's not going to be a quick thing. It's not going to be a 15 minute wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. You know, take your time. It might be several hours, but just, you know, massage, warm the area up, make sure that, that you're relaxed and comfortable and just be open to it. And, you know, just don't, don't overthink it. Just get in the moment, let yourself relax, let yourself be in your body and enjoy the sensation. But don't overthink it. And and if you need to call it at some point, don't feel like you have to go through with it either. You know, if you feel like this is all I can take at the moment, then then stop. You know, you don't have to keep going. You don't have to finish. You don't, there's no end goal. The end goal is to have fun and to play with your partner. It's not, there's, there's no set, ooh, we have to do X, Y, and Z, or Z down here. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's what I would say. No, and those, I think that's absolutely correct. Anything else to add? Um, I would say from a man's point of view, being the recipient, Uh um, I would say yes to all the above. I would add there is nothing wrong with wanting your prostate massaged. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that there is this, I'm sure at least, I won't say I know, but I'm confident that there are people out there that go, oh, a straight man doesn't want his prostate massaged, blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, we've talked about it before, the health benefits of having a prostate massage, and this is actual real science um, and firsthand experience, is I can tell you from personal experience, I was waking up in the middle of the night having to pee. Um, We start doing more consistent prostate massage. I can go to bed at, I could go to bed at 8 p.m. because I'm that kind of guy and wake (laughs) up at 8 a.m. And granted, when I wake up at 8 a.m., it's because I have to pee. But I am not waking up in those 12 hours having to go to the bathroom. And that's the only difference in life is the prostate massage. Mm-hmm. Consistent. Um, the, I, I will say that. And then there's plenty of studies that show that uh, prostate massage reduces the um, uh, likelihood of prostate cancer. Um, plenty of studies yeah. out there on that. So, you know, there's nothing... I mean, use the word queer. There's because I know that there are straight men out there, and then I'm going to lump everybody else away from the straight uh, group. There, there's nothing wrong with it. It's 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 no. something that it's a good feeling. And if if you want to give it a go, fucking give it a go. Talk to your partner. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. And you um, can always try it. And if you decide it's not for you, it's not for you. Absolutely, prostate right. massage yeah. has nothing to do with your sexuality no. at all. Um, I w- those I think that's that's the main things that I would, I would add to that. Okay. Um, yeah, sounds good. but it's, it's awesome. Um, yeah. be communicative, talk, yeah. you know, if something feels good, you tell your partner, it feels good. If something doesn't feel good, you tell your partner, it doesn't feel good. And then you sort yeah. of move even on going through the massage techniques, you know, some are going to feel better than others. Yeah. And you tell your partner, like, I really like yeah. that one. Do more of that. You you know? Know, <laughs> and you don't have to say it that way. You can no, say it no, like no. this. Oh. <laughs> and if they do something you don't like, you go, <laughs> and then and then they start doing the other thing that you like and you push your ass up against them and you're like mm. that I mean that's that's a way to communicate yeah. what yeah. you what feels good and as the massager ask your partner cuz I know with you that I was constantly saying yeah. is this okay is mm-hmm. this okay and and you and I agreed because we're doing this as a um, air quotes uh, as a performance we agreed on a a, a, a Double tap meant Mm -hmm. if I double tapped you anywhere, I would then look at your hands, and if you single tapped, that meant everything was okay. If you double tapped, that meant there was a problem. 
Yeah. So, you know, I can I can massage you and even down at your ankles. If I double tap your ankle, mm-hmm. I look at your hands. If it's a single tap, it's okay. So have that kind of, if you don't want to have a verbal communication, have those, it those be a non-verbal, non-verbal signs that you can, you can ask your partner, is this okay? And then he or she can respond yes or no. Yeah. Um, I think, I think that's really important um, to have and then to be responsive to. Yeah, for sure. That's all I would have to say about that. Do you want to talk about it's, the rest of the night's uh, going to go by like like that? Yeah, the rest of the night isn't as exciting as the class was. <laughs> no, I mean, the um, class but, was amazing. Yeah, the class was really fantastic. Um, the rest of the night, we did stay at the club for a bit afterwards. We probably only stayed for, I'm going to say, quote, unquote, a few hours. It was probably I'd three to two, four hours. I would say, yeah, I would have said two and a half to three yeah, hours. Yeah, something like cause that. Because we ended up having dinner at the club. That's true, we did. <laughs> we had food delivered. <laughs> Um, um, yeah, because we'd been there since six thirty, and yeah. and by you know eleven o'clock, and we neither of us starving. had eaten since I yeah. didn't even eat lunch that day, but yeah. we didn't get a chance to, so we were starving. Um, but yeah, so we stayed at the club for a few hours. We weren't there as as long as some nights, and admittedly, I mean, after all of that, and just the whole, I, I think because of the mindset that I was in. And I think Mr. Adam as well. We didn't really feel like playing with other people. No, and we were. It was a rough work week. Yeah. We were t- both tired, and so, yeah, we we were very social. Yes. We talked to everybody. There were there, there were, were a lot of great people to talk to. Yeah. And and I felt a little bad because there was a couple we had seen there before, and they came yeah. up and talked to us and gave you know kind of gave some hints that they wanted to play and whatnot. And and at some point I just looked at them and I was like, I'm sorry, I just don't feel like playing tonight. Yeah. Like I really like you guys and I normally would be very interested. Absolutely. But tonight's one of those nights I just want to just talk to people and I want to be in this environment, but I. I don't feel like playing with other people. Again, because we feel very safe at yeah. Our Secret Spot. You know, it's one of those places that that's sort of, it's now become a safe zone. And I'm really very glad that it's, it is that it's way. It's a welcoming environment. Yeah. yeah. And it's, you're surrounded by people who have similar mindsets and yeah. that's important. Um, and sometimes it's fun just to talk to people yeah. like that and you don't have to hold anything But we back. had a lovely conversation with a couple that is from Sydney yeah. um, who we, you know, we, we, we talked to them a lot. We've had some good back and forth now since then on uh-huh. emails. Um, it was, gr- it was a great night. It's like socially, it was. I was really excited, you know, talking to them, talking to the couple that we, that wanted to play, but then yeah. we were like, eh, and, you know, it was great talking to them. Sorry guys, if you listen to us, come back another time. I know, we'll, please. Yeah. Be yeah. patient with us. Um, <laughs> yeah. you know, talking to the law, uh, you know, we had dinner with him. That was great. <laughs> um, it was one of the ladies last night and that was a sad face. One of the, uh, that's true. One of one the staff of, members, one of the staff uh-huh. members, it was her last night. So we talked to her for a little while. Well, it was socially, it was a great night, but yeah, yeah it was just wasn't a, we, neither one of us were in the mindset to play. Right. Well, and, and it's nice though that, that you can go to the club and you can be with people and you can flirt with them and you can have good conversation, but again, you don't have to play. Yeah. If you don't want to, if you don't feel it, you don't have to. Yeah. Cool. Uh, uh, do you want to wrap up with a question? Um, I might have one. Yeah, sure. Let's go for it. Yeah. What do you have? Um, so something that has been asked of me multiple times okay. by different people, this has been, um, all these, this question has always come to me from people face to face when they start talking to me. Okay. So I'm going to ask you, and I'm kind of curious to see what your response is. And it is about anal sex. Okay. So it's a two-parter. The first question is, does it hurt? Okay. And this is always from people that have either had experiences with anal sex or have never had any. Mm -hmm. Their experiences aren't a lot of experiences, but some. And then, so after, does it hurt? How can I make it hurt? If it does, how can I make it hurt less? Mm -hmm. So, um, obviously you're more experienced in this than I am, but I would say that the answer to the first question is it doesn't have to. It can, but that's dependent upon your partner. Um, and I, for me, if you're properly primed and warmed up and you're ready for it and your partner is cognizant and conscious of what they're doing and they're gentle, you know, they, they've warmed you up, they're using enough lubrication, um, you know, it does, no, it doesn't hurt at all. It feels really good. But at the same time, if somebody's just going to, you know, come up and try to 
jam something into you, well, then yes, it's going to hurt. <laughs> so, I mean, but no, if, if you're if you're playing and this is what you're doing for the night, and, and like I said, if you're warmed up, you're ready for it, you use enough lube, and, and you're primed, and they're, they're cognizant of what they're doing, then no, it doesn't have to hurt at all. All right, so, but... Then, if it does hurt, I mean, is that is that your answer to? Uh, I would say that's my to the second part because for me, if it starts to hurt, then it's a back off. Either, well, it can be either a pause. Let me get used to what you know. If you're pushing a little hard or whatever, like give me a moment. You right. know, let me relax, and then maybe you can continue. Or it may be no, you need to back off, and I think right. that depends on the level of I'm going to say pain. Um, or sensation, I guess I was maybe a better word, but that depends on the level of sensation. And it may be just, you know, there's a little more pressure than I would like or what, than I was expecting. So give me a moment to relax. You know, let me take a deep breath or two and then you can continue. Or it, it may be a, nope, that hurts done. Right. Yeah. Revisit another time. So for me, it's funny because for me, it always depends on the partner. And I completely agree with that. But some guys are, are really well hung. Yeah. That is for me. I, it's not a. It's not a garage where I want to park a bus. <laughs> I gotta be honest. <laughs> like I will pick the smaller, the less endowed guys over the yeah. more endowed guys over and over. And perhaps that even goes back to my experience level. Um, maybe I would change the more experience I got, but. Um, for me, I'd rather have a guy that is a little smaller who feel who I feel like and he, and he feels like he can just go wild. Like he can let go. Pun yeah. intended, balls to the wall. Kind of yeah. just like let go and, and fuck. And you can really have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Then a guy that who feels like he has to be co- constantly cognizant of what he's doing and I have to be constantly cognizant because at that point, then neither one of us are really relaxed enough to let go and True. enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it does depend on your level of relaxedness and the partner that you're with. There are things that you can do, positions that make it easier. I think for me, I almost, with a new male partner or with a male partner in general, I have to start out on top. Mm-hmm. So if, if for women, um, have your, it, basically it's cowgirl. So, you know, he's on his back, you're straddling him because you know, the way our, our bodies are made, there's that natural sort of S. So the mm-hmm. first muscle is, is the, is right there at, in the crack. The next muscle in is about, I don't know, an inch and a half to two inches in. Um, it's the, for me, it's the second muscle that always hurts. Um, because that muscle is always clenched tightly. That's mm-hmm. because that's the way we were made. Um, if you're squatting, that muscle in 7S, it's a, it's a straight, uh, it's a more straight line, and it's easier for me to relax that muscle. So once I've been penetrated, then I sort of get into that relaxation. I'm like, oh, okay, this, I feel more comfortable now. It doesn't hurt as much. Um, and then I can move to other positions. Um, mm-hmm. After squatting, for me, the next least painful is on my back because, again, I can bring my legs up. Oh, yeah. Um, so I'm basically squatting, but I'm on my back. Um, plus you get that visual stimulation of the guy mm-hmm. in front of you. Um, and then for me, the most painful is doggy style, but it's also the most really? erotic and attractive because again, there's that something, grrr, you know, it, it feel it, you know, it feels dirty and wrong. And I don't know, See, that's, I it's like, gotta be a socio. I like doggy though. For anal. Yeah. That's amazing. So like, like for me and, and partners, men, male partners I've been with, that's, I know f- yeah. that tends to be the last yeah. place that we go. Um, and if you do do it, oh my God, there's a horrific joke there. <laughs> <laughs> do Move <it>. on. <laughs> if, the, if you do do it that way, um, I tend to bring my ass way back over my heels rather than over my knees. Right. So I'm lowering my, my ass back again to where I'm squatting. Yeah. Um, and then your ass, you kind of point your ass up yeah. and you pull your shoulders down. And then that's a little easier. But that tends to be the way that it And it that is works. a good point, too, is, is 
to try different positions. If one oh, yeah. doesn't work for you, don't say it's not it. You know, yeah. Try other positions because there's a well, lot out there. and Much like we were talking yeah. about with the massage. You know, yeah. one leg straight and the other leg drawn up close to the chest uh-huh. is a really comfortable position. Yeah. Um, and if your partner straddles your outstretched leg, that also reduces the depth at which he can push True. in. So... You know, if it's a depth thing, that's a great position to be in for that. And yeah. I find that that also reduces the amount of pain um, that I that I feel. Um, there are lubes that you can use. For instance, back door. Uh-huh. Um, I would stay away from anesthetic. Or, is that the word yeah. I'm looking for? Anesthetic lubes. Because if you feel pain, you want to be able to communicate that. There are suppositories that you can take that are numbing suppositories. I think that is... A very bad idea, especially if it's your yeah. first time. Because if something is going wrong, you want to know. You need to know that it's yeah. going wrong. You don't want fissures. Yeah. Um, those are bad. Um, yeah. But yeah, so but backdoor lube has a uh, it's a relaxant. It's a very mm-hmm. it's an herbal relaxant kind of thing. So it's not as bad as a. Yeah. It's just meant to sort of relax we, those muscles. And we tend to use that not a little the, more. Not with, the nerves. Yeah, we tend to use that a little more with toys as well. Yeah. So. So yeah. that's just, that's what I would say. But this all culminates in a, in a wonderful, wonderful joke. And I don't know all if right. anybody out there has heard this joke, but I love I'm this joke. I'm scared as to where this is going. Yeah, you should be. Uh, you know the difference between jelly and jam? No. What is it? I can't jelly my dick up your ass. Oh, oh that's bad. <laughs> oh. So sorry. I don't even want to know where the peanut butter is then. Oh my god! I'm so <laughs> embarrassed. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, that's a wonderful way to end this. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> we had to go somewhere like that, yeah. didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Thanks for taking us there. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, I'm sure we're gonna get some comments that people say this podcast stinks. Um, sure. I don't care. Sure. Um, you know. Um, but seriously, all jokes aside, folks, if you guys want to ask us questions, um, you can email us at uh, theatomsoflove at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can also ask your questions over Twitter. Uh, follow us at By the By Podcast. Um, and the website? You, you can go on the website and you can leave us a, a comment or, or, or 20. Um, our website is www.bythebuy.com.au. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, Thanks that's, for joining uh, us again and hope you have good holidays. Yeah, happy, happy holidays. Yeah. Ho, ho, ho. Uh, leave Santa some cookies, some milk, and a couple of condoms because, you know, that guy comes everywhere, you know. Don't. I don't know. No, no. Bad. No. Let's just leave it. <laughs> um, he comes every year. He does. I don't know. All right. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. Bye.